Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up tile sets and tile maps inside of Unity for a 2D game. So when you have your level scene opened up, you're going to start by going over to the left and right clicking over here, and then choosing new 2D object with uh, right click 2D object, and then tile map, and then rectangular for this type of grid based top down style RPG, but you can see that there's other options like hexagonal and isometric too. So when you add your tile map, you're going to see that it is added as a child of this grid. And then the grid is set to the scale of 1, 1, and 1. Now for the tiles I'm currently using, this Super Retro World interior, uh, you can see right here that it is a 16x, which means 16 by 16 pixels for each tile. So what I actually want to do with the grid is I want to have that reflect that by changing the grid size of x and y to 0.16 and 0.16 for y. That's because by default, one unit for Unity is 100 pixels. You can see that in the pixels per unit. So we want to have the grid reflect that by having it be 16 pixels or 0.16. Now for the art asset, which you bring in, and you can use any tile atlas that you want, you're going to want to go into it and change its sprite mode from single to multiple. So the reason for that, obviously, as we'll see if we open up the sprite editor, and I'll hit apply so that it stays in multiple mode, is because it's not one single frame, but many different objects contained within a atlas. So this is how I want it to look for slicing. But in order to do that, you may need to go up to the slice menu. And then for type, you can go to grid by cell size and put in 16 by 16 here. As long as you know the size of each tile, grid by cell size is a great way to slice up your tile map and just make sure everything is precisely where it needs to be. So 16 by 16 and then hit apply. Of course, once again, those numbers depend on the size of your tile map. You might be working with 32 by 32 tiles or bigger than that. So now that we have this tile atlas sliced up, we can create a tile palette from it, which we can use to draw onto our tile map. So go up to Window and then 2D Tile Palette. Uh, if it pops up over here, what I like to do is uh, drag this into the dock next to the inspector. And then we can use this Create New Palette over here to create our palette. So I'm going to just call this Super Retro World Interior. And uh, by the way, if you didn't know, this pack is available on itch.io. So if you want to go use the same assets I am, that's where you find it. Uh, cell size, let's see, we want it to be manual. I think we need this to be 0 0.16. So let's go ahead and create that. And you can store your palettes wherever you want. Uh, for now, I'm just going to store it in the same folder where the art assets are actually contained. So I'll just choose this folder here and it will create a prefab object over here for the palette. So I can click on that. Now, um, there's nothing actually in the palette yet. So what we just need to do is drag this entire atlas over here and just drag it in to basically any space. Let go there and it's going to try to create tiles for each of the squares inside of that atlas. Now, for an atlas this size, it's going to create hundreds of tiles. So what I'm going to do is create a new folder here. I'm going to call it tiles inside of retro world interior and i'm going to save all my tile assets into here uh, that way it'll stay organized and uh, we can still find the base image and the tile palette if we need it okay so now we should see our entire tile atlas over here okay so now we should see our entire tile atlas over here and we can click on any of these tiles we want to use and then draw them onto the tile map so let's go ahead and start laying down a ground floor for this room. I'll just make it really simple just to demonstrate. So you could just left click and hold and drag in the tiles. Once you've created a border, you can actually switch to this flood fill with active brush and then just click inside and fill the rest of the tiles and just save yourself a little bit of time there. Uh, so now we have a basic ground floor. So before we continue adding in walls and furniture and stuff like that, what I want to point out is that the tile maps can work in layers. So you can have multiple tile maps on one grid, and that can be a good idea because uh, different objects inside of your scene are going to want to render at a, a different level compared to each other. So if you click on the tile map, you can see down here, additional settings, sorting layer, and order in layer. Now you don't necessarily need to move anything to the, its own sorting layer. You can do that if you want um, one type of object to always have a higher priority over the default layer or lower priority. Or you can just customize the sorting in layer if you want. It depends on how complicated you need to be. For a scene like this, I think just taking the order in layer and setting a custom value for each of your tile maps is gonna be plenty. 
So the order and layer should be below the player and other objects that might sit on top of it. So I'm going to rename this tile map to be ground. And I'll just give it an order and layer of negative five. So you see when we do that, that this other invisible wall object I was using from another tutorial kind of pops into the scene because now this tile map has the lowest rendering order in the scene. So everything else shows on top of it. Um, so that can be important because your character is going to walk in front of objects like a plant. And you want to make sure that when it's standing in front that it's actually rendering in front, not behind the object, or it'll just look weird. So that's why you would want multiple tile maps. So you can just click on your tile map here and duplicate it, um, Command or Control D. And we might want to have one for walls here. And another reason why you want multiple tile maps is actually because uh, with tile maps, uh, you can add tile map colliders to them. So you don't need to create custom shapes. It'll actually just kind of create the collider for you. So let's do that real quick. I'm going to add component and let's do tile map collider 2D. And uh, you can see that all of these ground squares got a collider. And that's actually not what we want. The reason that happened is because I just duplicated the tile map layer. So I guess maybe it's better to just add a new one. Uh, but we can fix that pretty easily. Let's go into the tile map and use the erase brush. And I'll just erase all of the ones on the walls layer. So you can see the tile map collider is disappearing since uh, these are just duplicated tiles, but the original ground does not have a tile map collider. So this is how you can uh, determine whether a object drawn with a tile map. So that's how you can determine whether an object drawn with a tile map is going to have a collision shape or not. So while there's nothing on this tile map, I'm just going to duplicate it a couple times. Okay, so duplicating it and I'll call this one objects, no collision or no call. And this one I'm going to call objects call for collision. So this one's going to keep its tile map collider, but the other one we're going to remove that. So for the no call, remove the tile map collider component. So if I want to create an object now that your player can collide with, you put it on objects call. Otherwise, you put it on objects no call. And for each of these, I guess I'll change the order and layer to five. Uh, so that it actually renders on top of everything. It'll be kind of a test and see if it looks correct sort of thing. So you can just change that whenever you need to. Let's actually add some objects now. So uh, for the tile palette on objects call, let's go ahead and grab a table. So I just select all of these tiles. You can just left click, hold and drag. And now we can just put a table in as one object. And you can see when we do that, it already has its collision shape. So it just kind of tries to go around the pixels roughly of uh, our object and uh, draw around that. So we don't need to really worry too much about the shape or anything. It's just kind of soft for us, which is really nice. Uh, let's add some extra stuff into the room. So I'll grab this chair stuff over here and maybe a bookshelf, that one with books. Let's put that up there. What else might we want? Okay, so uh, let's show for plants. So for plants, you probably want the bottom tile to have a collision, like over here. But you wouldn't want the top tile to have a collision because you want the player to kind of be able to walk behind the plant. If you think about the tile in terms of 3D, the thing that you would be colliding with is the pot, but the pot's only on the bottom. So it actually makes sense for the player to kind of be able to go behind the top tile. So in this case, you would actually put the top tile on the object's no collision, and then uh, the player would only collide with the bottom tile. So let's actually test the scene and see where we're at right now. So I'm going to walk over here, and uh, you can kind of see that the player can walk behind the plant. If I go in front of the plant, the player definitely can't walk above it. So uh, one of the things here that just doesn't look right is that the player collides with the plant way too easily. And that's just because of the shape of the player's collision. So we can fix that one pretty easily. Yeah, you can see that the player just doesn't get close enough to any of the objects in the scene, but the collisions are working correctly. So now we just dive into the player's uh, prefab. Uh, we see that that collision shape is way bigger than it should be. And we might even want it to be more of a box collider. It's really up to you, but we definitely want that shape to be smaller. So I'm going to edit the collider here and let's reduce this uh, way, way, way smaller. Going to need to rotate it as well. So let's see direction horizontal. Okay, now let's shrink that. So uh, once again, 
uh, when you're dealing with top-down games, the collision shape should be about where the object's standing because things like a person or a plant are going to be standing vertically. But obviously when you're representing that in 2D, it's just flat. So, so you have to think about where the object is touching the ground, not just what the shape of the art is. So there should not be a collision shape for the head, at least when you're determining walking around in the scene. So we can make this a little bit bigger. And uh, let's go back out. Let's test how it is in the game. Okay, so here we have another thing where uh, the player, the art of the player is not rendering above the object here. So that would be a case where we need to change the ordering in layer. So let's see, for this object's collision, I guess we need that to be negative. So now if we hit play and we go up here, we can see it renders in front. Now this might not always be the case. There may be some objects that you actually do need to render above the player. Uh, so just keep that in mind and you can create extra tile map layers as necessary. But this is how it should look because the player is standing in front of the bookcase. So that gives you the proper look there. And here the player is standing in front of the couch. But over here, the player will actually stand behind the top of the plant. And uh, that's because that no collision is on order in layer five. So if I change this to negative three, you can see that it immediately renders in front. So this would be an example of an object that actually needs to be at a higher uh, order in layer ranking. But uh, so far, moving around the scene seems to be working correct. So we can add in uh, some walls now. So for the walls, let's go to the tile palette. Um, so for this particular tile set, we have uh, the walls that will show at the top over here, and then we have the borders of all of our walls over here. So we need both of them. Um, so you can just choose any color wall that you want. And I'm just going to draw these on the wall layer up, up here. Uh, Got to make it straight so it looks correct. If I look at that, they should all have their tile map colliders. So that's good because we don't want to be able to walk through the wall generally. Um, and now we can add in the borders around the wall. So I'm going to click over here and get this corner tile, this corner tile, and then this goes at the top of the wall all the way around. We can use this tile to draw the uh, edge of the wall down. And uh, same on the left side. Let's do that. Uh, note that because of the tile map collider 2D, all of these collisions are being set up automatically, which is really nice. Okay, and then we have a corner tile down here, a corner tile down here, and we can just draw some base down here. Uh, now, in this case, there'd be no way to exit the room. So we might actually want to remove a couple tiles here. And then maybe we have one of these and this, and then this will be an exit to the room. So for the exit of the room, I don't know, uh, maybe we'd want one of these kind of shadowy tiles, and then that can make it clear that this is an exit. And then on the ground here, we might want to put a mat, which is obviously a no collision object. But uh, unlike the top of the plant, we actually want the player to always render on top of it because it's on the ground standing under his feet. So uh, we would need another tile map layer. So I'm going to right click up here, new tile map rectangular. I'll call this objects low, no collision, low as in uh, standing below the player. So I'll give this a order in layer of negative two, I suppose. Now, if we uh, click on objects low over here and let's grab this uh, mat here and we'll put it right in front of the door, it's going to render onto the player because it's on negative two order in layer. So if I hit play here, we'll be able to walk over here. And then the player always stands in front of the mat, which is once again, what we would expect. So you can just go around your room once again, testing all of the collisions, making sure everything is working properly, making sure that the order and layer sorting is working as intended and adjusting with different layers as necessary. And that is basically how you can use uh, tile maps and tile sets inside of Unity. Um, now, obviously, you're going to have to code areas like this down here where your player is going to exit the room because that doesn't just magically happen. But that would be a whole nother tutorial. So for now, that's going to be it. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching. And hopefully I'll see some of you guys in my future Unity content.